you're wondering if you can run your RV air conditioning off of your solar system, we're going to go through that today. Our unit is a Royal Classic. It is a 24-0 floor plan and it's a 1999 on a Ford E350 chassis. Up on the roof we've got just over a thousand watts of solar. It's a thousand and sixty I think the way the math goes. So we consistently get uh, over 800 watts with the situation that we have here and our northern latitude. Our split AC unit is a Senville unit and it runs a surprisingly low amount of power. We'll go ahead in and take a look. Right now it's 22C inside. And you'll notice that we do not have an AC unit on the roof. We switched that out for a fan cover. And our head unit for the split AC is mounted up in the front on the wall. Uh, just forward of the door. Now we have all of our electrical controls over here on this wall and we're gonna take a look at that. So our AC of course is running and you'll see on the consumption meter that there's really nothing coming in or going out. It's basically zero. And our charge controller is putting out 24.5 amps, 25 amps right now. And the battery's full. Our full capacity on this consumption meter is actually 500. Um, I just set it for 500 because it's easier to remember. And so we're down to, it's about 20 low. Now we're charging. Uh, we're charging a whole bunch. And the charger's putting out 34 and a half amps out of a maximum of 60 which will easily consume about 800 watts from our solar uh, that's just changing depending on it, what clouds are going by at the time and so we're basically not consuming or charging anything for the most part while the AC is running but the battery is still completely full uh, this is our inverter switch and we also have a solar charge controller source switch right here. In order to kind of make the AC a little more efficient, because the blower here, it actually blows across the unit. So to get all that air back to the bedroom area down the hallway, we're using these two little USB fans. They're just running on low power. And uh, they consume not much of anything. They're plugged into a USB power charger there, although they also run on batteries. These are 6-inch Opolar fans that we got from Amazon, and they are my favorite. As you saw when we came into the unit, the thermometer here is running at 22.5C. It's uh, 32C outside right now. And we have the actual um, control for the AC set to 24C. So I think up at this height it's probably a little bit warmer. And the temperature control is not here anyways. There is a follow me button on this that you can use so that the temperature in this unit will control the system. But we're not using that. We're actually using the temperature that is being measured right inside the head unit. So that's how that's going and it works out to around a 22C, 23C uh, living space here in the unit. So it's very, very comfortable. Uh, it's very quiet as you can tell. It's very quiet in here. There's no extra noise. We don't have a roof AC so it's not rattling around. and. Uh, Let's take a look at the rest of the electrical components. So this is our kitchen area. Uh, I did take out the useless little 
double sink that was here and put in a massive super deep um, residential sink and underneath in this cabinet where you may have a garbage can or something uh, we now have four of these valence 138 amp hour batteries we have an EP ever, EP ever uh, 60 amp solar charge controller and we have a 2000 watt Renogy inverter which is hardwired to our AC box in the vehicle so that is the entire power system we have uh, all kinds of crazy big cables the charge controller is um, doing all the hard labor as you can see the fan is not on the inverter is basically doing nothing it's not barely it's barely warm the charge controller is cold all the time this system just simply doesn't have to work very hard um, I do love this inverter we've easily taken a couple thousand watts out of it uh, you actually I actually plugged my MIG welder into the plug outside the RV and did a bunch of MIG welding for a few hours off of the inverter and the batteries uh, it's a very robust system and um, it just ticks away there's no need for a plug here to shore power at all uh, just going back to this for a second uh, you can see here that the clouds have gone away a little bit and so now we're actually charging 13 14 15 amps so the charge controller is producing 40 41 depending on the cloud cover and so we're actually now recharging the batteries as well as running all the load so the difference between this is so we've got a 55 amp charge coming in now that's about 800 watts and we're charging 30 amps in the battery which means our AC is consuming about 25 so on a full sun day we would easily produce enough to regenerate the battery usage that the AC would consume overnight. Now, it's running right now at around 25 amps, and that's just to maintain the cold level that we have set in the unit so far. You obviously, when the temperature goes down, when it's not 90 degrees outside, or 32C, uh, when the sun is not beating on the camper, the solar disappears but also so does the heat load so we end up running the AC uh, to keep the temperature down in the RV until about an hour and a half after sunset and that consumes uh, maybe 50 or 70 amp hours out of the battery pack which quickly recharges as soon as we get full sun because as you can see the solar charge controller is producing considerably more than the load so there's still lots of room left over for the 12 volt loads for the microwave use for any of the other 110 uses that we have and uh, there's still ample power to spare uh, you can't make this stuff up it's uh, very easy to run a motorhome this size on solar and still have air conditioning uh, it does consume quite a bit of power as a heat pump being used as a heater compared to its maintenance cycle for just air conditioning uh, but I definitely recommend getting rid of the roof unit and replacing it with one of these uh, low power inverter style of uh, split ACs the heat pump split AC is so much more efficient especially these new modern ones that are out there and we have no problem keeping up with that with our solar setup so I hope this will encourage you guys to get your setup going I do recommend you have something like three days worth of battery storage under a regular load usage and in our case with the valence lithium batteries the 138 amp hour batteries that we have installed um, we simply have we have way too much power there's there's not a chance of us running out of battery power here in this rig and um, as long as we don't park in the shade for too long 
there's no reason why this just won't keep going. We actually leave the AC on in the unit for the entire summer. It just sits here in the driveway in the in the house by the house. And when we want to go, we take off. It's always cool in here. Sometimes we can come out here and take a nap if it's too noisy in the house. We also use it as an extra workspace if someone's having a Zoom call and needs a quiet space to do their work without having the AC uh, rattling on the roof. It's a very quiet space to do those kinds of things. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the video comments and I'll be sure to share with you all the info I can. Happy trails.